Okay, so this is Art Rage of a Tie. It's the newest version coming out from Art Rage. So I want to give it kind of a run through. It's very similar to Art Rage 6. There are a few updates and some stuff seems to run a lot smoother. So I'm really excited to be uh, playing around with it. So I'm going to increase my canvas size just slightly. There we go. And have this. So this is an 18, uh, no, I'm sorry, 16 by 20 canvas size. That's my usual print size. So I'm working on that. So I want to sketch in a waterfall scene. I had seen a uh, Japanese print uh, from like 1910 or something like that. And it kind of inspired me to want to try some, not to reproduce it per se, but just to kind of use it as inspiration. So kind of want to play around with that. I'm going to also try doing a little bit different as far as um, laying it in so you guys can see kind of some more of my thought process. So what I'm wanting is kind of this mountain scene of where waterfalls are falling down over these rocks. So this will be rocks here. And then maybe waterfall coming down that changes multiple directions. Like so. So this is all water. And this is all water. And then we've got some stones here and there that it's flowing over and around. And so stone, stone, stones kind of thing. So it's kind of flowing down and around. It was a pretty dynamic scene. The artist was Hiro, Hiroaki Takahashi that I'd seen. I wrote it down so that way I could try to remember it find it again so anyway um, but it's good to kind of look at stuff that's come before you and see how people have done stuff and and what can you learn from it like I do that a lot with uh, you know kind of some people I grew up watching like Jerry Arnell and Bob Ross and that kind of stuff so I kind of use their uh, stuff as inspiration as well maybe a tree yeah coming up And I think he had a bridge. Oops. So control shift is how I'm drawing the straight line real quick. Okay. So something like that, and I think he had some people of standing which I don't know if I'll leave him in or not but that was kind of how his was which gave a sense of scale so that was kind of the nice thing about it So something, you know, kind of like that. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody watching, but <laughs> to me it does. So um, that's kind of how we're going to lay this out for that. Now I'm going to move some of my layers and stuff off screen so I can have a little bit more space. And my samples as well. Now this isn't all my samples, this is just some of them that's loaded in for this, but I could load them all. I have a whole sample box that I use. So if I loaded it from collection, there we go. Alright, so I'm going to take a black paint 
and I think I'm going to start with the marker tool. <coughs> Excuse me, and try and get some of this blocked in. Helps to put it on the correct layer, though. Now this is just when you select a tool with Art Rage. If you haven't selected like an actual preset, it will just load in kind of like a default brush, and that's what this is. So this is nothing special. So I find the marker tool works really well for blocking stuff in, especially where you're going to put rocks, because you get kind of this soft gradation and stuff that kind of helps to lay the underpainting. And if you've followed my channel or painted with me before, you know I always start with an underpainting of some kind to kind of get rid of some of the white that's back here. And I'll use a impressionistic cloud brush that I've made, or I'll use a um, the marker tool or, you know, different stuff like that. But it's just to get stuff really blocked in for where our, everything's going to be and getting rid of our um, white canvas. will be the water coming down. So there's a lot of waterfall in this. That's actually what kind of intrigued me with trying to paint a version of it. And I'm not trying to recreate his exactly. I'm just kind of using it as a starting point. So it'll have a lot of similarities to it, but it'll not be a copy of it per se. look up and see if this place actually exists or if it's just how close it is to his painting if it's something he took a lot of liberties with or what would be kind of a neat thing to look some grass over here and some grass here to kind of connect that a little bit of rock as well so I guess this is more back in here. Kind of shape that a little different. Like so. Have it come out and around. Like so. And then kind of build this down and around. shift and then click and drag to the left make sure brush smaller you can also if you need some fine tuning a little bit more control over it you can use your bracket keys left bracket key shrinks right bracket key enlarges but this is a great way to quickly draw in whoops
it. So that kind of helps me get a little bit more of a an idea of the direction that we're headed. So that way we have a good roadmap. So yes, yeah, so like I was saying, I always do the underpainting because it does help get rid of the white canvas, but mainly because it does give me this road map of where I'm going and the direction I want to take. And so I can adjust and change on the fly as needed for this. Okay. So that gives us a really great painting that your kid could do <laughs> all right so I'm gonna pull up some of my stencils and if you don't have these you can get uh, a lot of these on Gumroad but I have a whole set of different stencils that you can get both free and uh, paid for so there's quite a few there Okay, so, you know, maybe something you want to take a look at. But one of the ones I'm going to need is my waterfall. And one of the other ones is my mountain slash rock texture. Okay, so we're going to use these two. Alright, so let's start putting in these rocks. So I'm going to make a new layer so I can go on top of this underpainting. And the great thing about um, <coughs> excuse me, the great thing about these stencils is that you can really twist and turn them. You can enlarge them by holding control. If you hold Alt, you can twist them and turn them. And if you hold Shift and Control, you can change them as far as by stretching them. So you can get a lot of mileage out of two or three stencils. All right. So we're going to go right here. I'm going to grab one of my presets. This impasto brush. Move that off. And the first thing I'm going to do is lay down. I got a little, probably got enough dark there, so let's add a little bit of first layer of color here. skip a little bit of a space and leave some of that dark in there like so now this is what I would do with a palette knife and this was the best way I could come up with for recreating the look you can get with a palette knife digitally. So it works really well. As you can see, you can lay stuff in quickly. And being able to really make these stencils and have them contort and twist and turn is one of the things that first drew me to Art Rage. I was like, I can it's like, I can mess around with these. I can really do some stuff that I would with traditional art. This is awesome. And so that's what I started doing. So I made these to help save time. Because you can paint all these in. I may have done it before, before I had the ability to do it with stencils and making my own stencils and playing around in Art Rage. I would hand paint all of this stuff in. So the great thing about a stencil is it's a huge time saver. That's the whole point of it. You know, you'd spend the time, hand paint these, get these drawn out. And I drew these out in 
Art Rage, and then I created the stencils from it. And I'll have to drag the canvas at the spacebar and click on the canvas. Um, but I made these stencils, painted them up, saved them, and then uh, <coughs> then I just am able to use them again and again. So it's you know create it once, use it a thousand times. start getting see kind of a really quick rock texture just by messing around with that and because I'm putting this on another layer I can go below it I can select a little bit darker color and then I can come back in and start playing around with this underneath it just start making sure I've got rid of all of my white space and then I've really pushed these shadows to where I need them. Like so. So really quickly, you can start laying in some nice rocks and shadows and get a good feel for stuff. Now one thing you want to pay attention to is what direction these are going as far as the lights and the shadows. Because you'll see I'm twisting it around and by doing this vertical here and this here that gives the feeling that there's a rock face there. So that's why I'm doing it that way. You can also lay in the under, you know, I was doing the underpainting with the marker tool. The roller brush that right here works really great too. rocks that are in the background and make these bigger so when you start painting these make them a little bit bigger than what the final rock is going to be the shape and such doesn't overly matter at this point just kind of a general rock shape but make them a little bit bigger because you're going to refine the shape with the waterfall so you want it just a little bit bigger Like so. Okay. We can jump back up to the other layer that we were on. Hold Alt, click, that changes, lets us pick the color. And then we're going to add a little bit of a highlight to some of these rocks. And this is just the first. We're actually going to add another highlight to these. This is kind of like highlight number one. some reason my stylus when I select stuff it just doesn't always click 
So if you see something jump like that, that's what it is. It's my stylus selecting it and then it not wanting to move it. If you push your, if you have a mouse with a roller uh, wheel on it, if you push that down, it centers the image back on your screen. So that's how I was able to do that. Okay, so we've got that laid in there for those rocks. Now let's work on our waterfalls as well. So I'll move this off a little bit. So for our waterfall, I'm going to give it a little bit more of a bluish color under paint. And kind of like the rocks, you just keep moving this around and adding and building the texture, knowing that you're going to come in over top of it and really kind of change it. The key thing is just to try and get some of that underlying texture put in there. And you can switch brushes, for example, if you want to switch. Um, there are several that I've got, but I mean, you could even just go with some of the standard ones from Art Rage. But, for example, like the soft brush, which gives kind of a streaky kind of feel anyway. It works great for laying this in.
I get some lag when I'm recording, so that's what you're seeing there. It's good old lag. So again, it's getting laid into kind of the underpainting. Okay. Now you can take your palette knife, for example, and go to something like Just Blend Color. And for some of the oil paints, it'll blend down. Increase the pressure and it'll kind of stretch and soften some of these. Okay. You know, it's just something you play around with. All right. So going back to new layer. put this one over top of our rocks and then come back and erase around our rocks. So let's kind of define these a little more and go with a, an almost white. This is just a really raging waterfall. This would be impressive to go see how much it really is raging in this. You know, over, over all these rocks and see like how much artist license was there, how much um, true just power of rushing water was there, is there. So you can see these stencils really help you get that texture quickly. And that build up.
And the nice thing is that since we can twist and contort it, we can really change, again, the way they look and really build up these layers. And by just taking these two stencils and going back and forth and moving around, again, I get that real organic feel like I would if I were using a palette knife or anything else. So see we really have that waterfall kicking in now to where you can kind of see some of the other stuff and then you can go back in with your soft brush and kind of define some of these areas. go just above so this is just above that uh, drawing layer I want to kind of see where the white is and get rid of some of it So that way I can come back and add it, add what a, the highlights I want, not ones that are just peeking through. Gives me a little bit better feel. So that kind of pulls everything together harmony wise because I've got some of that blue that's now peeking through the rocks, it's peeking through the grass, and it kind of pulls it all together for that harmony of color. For that, so now I've got again underpainting, not finished painting yet, so it still looks kind of crazy, and that's fine. I'm going to select Alt and pick that color again and go in and refine where some of these are. And I can use the roller, I mean, just to show you how, whoops, how that can work. If I want a little bit different type feel, see, I can use it, but I'm actually going to go back to that soft brush because I like how that looks. It's really just a matter of continuing to add to this. 
And for this right here, you'll notice I'm kind of following the shape of the waterfall because I want the brush strokes to follow through it, even though I'm using a stencil. So that way it still keeps that same flow. And once I've got this established in with some of the texture, I can just go in and paint it too. I don't have to keep using the stencil. I mean, I probably will, but I don't have to. I'm not tied to it. I can use these brushes to keep painting in some of that organic feel. And I can even switch brushes. So, for example, if I want to switch to. Uh, that's the soft brush. So. I could switch to like a smudgy brush. Or like this old brush. So I get kind of a similar. Just kind of paint and pull it in. One of the downsides with the stencil is that it's kind of hard to see it behind it, so. recording software really makes this lag. <laughs> Vitae actually does a really good job with kind of eliminating some of that lag when you're not recording. Um, it kind of fix some of the, I don't want to say bugs, but you know, it, it's more efficient, I guess is the best way to say it. Because ArtRage 6 is actually really good. I've liked it a lot. Alright, so I've got some of that in there. Now this is where again I could take the palette knife and I could kind of come over it and kind of soften it and drag it the direction that the water's flowing and it just kind of helps smooth it together. It's a real subtle thing but it's there. Like so. And sometimes it's not so subtle. That was a little too much, so I'm going to undo that. Control Z. And go lightly across. What it is, that's where I put that roller in there. It was putting a different amount of paint on. Okay. I want to see some of them move my layers for a second. Yeah, that didn't really make any difference. Okay. Just wanted to see if I needed to bring the rocks up or not. Alright, so E for eraser. Control and scroll lets you zoom in. On Art Rage 6, it's just scroll the wheel, which I kind of liked better, to be perfectly honest. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. 
but I kind of liked it better in Art Rage 6 where I could just um, do the scroll the mouse wheel and it moves stuff. Now here's a cool thing too, you can actually set the brushes to erase mode. So like if you get something like this big chunk of white here that I don't like, I can erase it. Like so. But it also helps, for example, with trying to pull in, say, some of these shadows for where the water is splashing around. Gives you that same organic feel. Like so. So just something else to consider of how you can use these brushes. I think the custom brushes are probably one of the best things that Art Rage came up with. And I love their passion with what they're doing. I've talked with some of them because they're based in New Zealand. I'm in the U.S., but they're just so passionate about what they're doing. They have great community support boards and everything else. I really like what they're doing. And I've been fortunate to kind of beta test some stuff and work on it, so it's been kind of neat. Again, just kind of pushing some of this back to kind of seed it. It's all subtle stuff, but it, you know, it works. So really think about how is the water going to flow across this? How is it going to hit? You know? And that helps to really see and understand where it's going to do. So, I think that's given us what we need for here for these falls. come back and put more highlights and kind of pull these rocks forward and pull some of this water forward too. So again, not the finished product, just still kind of the underpainting. But we'll start refining them as we're going. Try to flatten this out and push this back a little bit. It's coming out of there. There we go. Okay, like so. sell that 
So I'm going to save this real quick. So I'll be right back.